Sun Tzu is undoubtedly one of the best epic commanders in Rise of Kingdoms, if not still the best epic commander. But how does he actually hold up in 2023? Can you still maybe squeeze him in there in a pinch? in season of conquest that's what we're going to be talking about today so make sure you stay tuned and i'm excited because we haven't talked about sun tzu very much lately on this channel and honestly my second ever youtube video about rise of kingdoms featured sun tzu on the thumbnail and that is still one of my most popular rise of kingdoms videos to this day so not only do i love sun tzu as a commander there's some sentimental value to this commander for me as well so without further ado let's jump right into it but first what's going on guys cheers we're breaking out the 64 ounces of water once again this is your reminder to stay hydrated and fix your posture sit up straight okay what are you doing you look like a shrimp and trust me i know because i did that's what i look like all day when i'm editing these videos <laughs> okay let's just quickly refresh our memory as to what exactly sun tzu is doing as a commander here in rise of kingdoms because for some of you it might have literally been years since you read the skills on sun tzu okay his active skill when expertise has a 1000 rage requirement and it says it deals direct damage to up to five targets in a fan shaped area with a damage factor of 800 and deals additional damage to the targets on the next turn with a damage factor of 200 so a total of 1000 damage factor and then sun tzu gains an additional 50 rage for each target hit by this skill okay so there's a couple of things that are really important about this skill that you might have missed okay first of all it hits five targets which duh obviously omni arc how could i miss that it's right there but that's actually pretty unique because a lot of the commanders in the game only hit three targets in a forward facing fan shaped area okay even commanders like Harold, who has a condition for his aoe he still can only hit three targets in a circular aoe the expertise on chuck only hits three targets william can only hit three targets and joan of arc prime can only hit three targets as well so the fact that sun tzu can hit five is pretty nice the other thing that you have to keep in mind here is that there is nothing on this skill description that says that his skill damage is reduced by 15 percent per target that is hit which is very very uncommon there are very few commanders in the game that have that be the case if you take a look at Guan Yu for example this is what I'm talking about damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15 percent for each additional target and you're going to see this on pretty much every single AoE commander in the game now it's not on every AoE commander in the game in fact Ethelflaed is a great example of another commander that hits five targets with an 800 damage factor and it's not reduced by 15 percent for each additional target but pretty much every other commander has that 15 percent damage reduction caveat so that's really interesting for Sun Tzu and then of course the rage regeneration here is nice okay because if you hit one target it's 50 two targets is 100 this is basic math Omni Arc I get it but it goes up to 250 and that's pretty good 250 rage every time you shoot an active skill that is literally one quarter of the requirements to firing this skill again and that's not even to take into account the amount of rage you're normally just going to be gaining from that skill now of course you have to hit five targets every time so it's it's not going to happen every time you fire it but it's still a really nice rage engine so there's actually a lot built in to this active skill which is crazy the second skill however is quite bad it says while this commander is leading the garrison of your own city garrison troops take seven percent less damage now in the early game it's actually really good he's actually a really good garrison commander for your city in the early game even though you should never take a city rally or a swarm or anything like that especially if you're free to play okay so don't use this as an excuse to put sun tzu on your wall and take a rally don't take a rally don't take a rally i'm saying it don't take a rally but if anyone's gonna be on your city when you're offline this is pretty good in the early game okay seven percent less all damage that's nice the downside it's only your city so you can't use this in a fortress you can't use this in a flag or a pass or anything like that it does nothing third skill gives you 10 percent less damage taken okay that's really good and 10 percent increased health it's not much but it is the one stat that infantry want the most so okay that's cool and finally his fourth skill gives him 20 percent increased skill damage which is pretty solid I mean bonuses to skill damage are sort some of the most valuable bonuses to stats in the entire game even to this day in 2023 and Sun Tzu has been in the game since it first launched so 20 percent bonus skill damage as a skill is good and if you ask me would I rather have 20 percent bonus skill damage or 20 percent more 
infantry stats right like they could have done 10 percent attack 10 percent defense but i would rather have 20 percent increased skill damage so the fact that he only has 10 percent health is actually not that bad so all in all you can see why sun tzu might be or, or i think is the best epic commander in the game now let's jump right in here to some of the test results as you can see we use the rock battle simulator because we've determined that this simulator is about 90 to 95 percent accurate and honestly i don't predict sun tzu performing super well here so i decided to save my hospital bills okay now let me first just be clear about how we tested this first of all i did cpo prime primary with sun tzu secondary and i did this for the entirety of all the tests because i felt that cpo prime primary was going to give sun tzu the best possible chance at performing well okay he has aoe skill damage which is boosted by sun tzu sun tzu also has skill damage there's i mean there's a little bit of health on sun tzu okay i just feel like cpo prime is the best possible single infantry commander you could pair with here so that's what i did for every single test and then we paired up against a couple of different commander pairs first of all we did nevsky with joan okay and this is the only test here where they use 230,000 on both sides I actually changed it to 210 for the rest because it's just faster and the 20k doesn't really make that much of a difference honestly for pretty much all the tests for CPO we used France uh for everyone else we used Ottoman except for I think one or two examples later which I will go over we use France for the infantry uh and as you can see on the equipment here um we don't use best in slot for everything because I personally think that if you are using Sun Tzu you probably don't have best in slot everything but I did give it equipment that is reasonable and sort of fair okay uh you could see the talent builds on both sides here and we basically just assumed that you were in season of conquest with the 40 percent bonus damage uh you've seen my other videos where i go over the parameters that we are testing okay uh, i use basically the same parameters as the other video 10 percent health rune 5 percent skill damage skin 10 percent defense bonus item etc etc you guys understand it i've done this a bunch of times before now here you can see the first battle report okay uh and there are 10 battle reports up against nevsky joan all right and we're just going to work backwards here so you could see 85k remaining for the uh nevsky joan here we have 100k remaining for the nevsky joan here we have 101k remaining here we have 73k remaining okay here we have 79k remaining 62 95 91 92 okay okay 83 okay so Scipio lost every single time okay uh he lost every single time and that's a bummer and not only that but he lost by a lot okay he lost by a lot uh and I know you might be thinking well this isn't a great example of Sun Tzu because it's he has AoE and you're not doing AoE and it's like yeah but Joan has AoE as well so it's like you know you're kind of like missing out on AoE for for both of them right so what we could see here is a, is a pretty poor showing okay uh infantry is supposed to counter cavalry and they get absolutely destroyed by Nevsky Joan okay now I wanted to start here because I thought okay well Nevsky Joan is one of the best open field pairings in the game right now so let's just see how it goes up against that and then we'll work backwards we'll try to find a pair that CPO with Sun Tzu can defeat and I will tell you that there is one okay there is one so stay tuned for that because it might actually shock you okay uh because I was kind of surprised to be honest maybe I shouldn't have been I don't know but you can see here destroyed by Nevsky Joan let's move on next I thought okay Nevsky Joan is too powerful but what were players using before Nevsky Joan Saladin William was a pretty popular combination so let's go ahead and test against that and here you could see that it was much closer 32,000 remaining for the Saladin William okay so still lost but still much closer let's move on to the second report 48k remaining 29k remaining 28k remaining 31k remaining 40k remaining we have 35k remaining 35k remaining 50k remaining and 41k remaining okay so Scipio Sun Tzu loses every single time once again even though Saladin William is significantly uh worse or I wouldn't say significantly but is definitely worse than Nevsky Joan okay maybe you could argue significantly I'm not gonna that's that's a topic for a whole other video okay but it's definitely worse than Nevsky Joan and still CPO Sun Tzu can't even win a single time it can't even get the RNG luck with the ring of doom just procking insanely uh, you know like it is it just it, you just couldn't pull it off okay so it was at this point that i started changing it to five battles because i thought i might be wasting my time doing 10 rounds with each one because it seems like cpo sun tzu is gonna lose to everything right so here we do five rounds up against a guan cpo okay and here you can see i left them as ottoman empire because they both have skill damage all right 
and we see that uh 91k remaining for the guan cpo here we have 77k remaining for guan cpo 79k remaining for guan cpo 78k remaining for guan cpo and 78 almost 79k so once again this performs maybe uh is obviously better than saladin william a little bit worse than the nevsky joan but you could see here that uh guan cpo absolutely destroys cpo sun tzu every single time it's not even close it wins by a mile then i thought okay well i have to put it up against an archer march because if i don't then people in the comments are going to get mad even though in my mind i was like well you know cpo sun tzu can't even beat cavalry that it's supposed to counter and it can't even beat infantry which is an even match so how is it ever going to defeat any archer march so yeah now i decided you know what let's test it anyway we'll do five rounds we do nebu ysg okay because i knew Boudica jugliang wins everything 1v1 always in every simulation that i've ever done so i wasn't gonna bother i know it's gonna be a blowout nebu with ysg i figured is sort of a pair that some players might still use it's relatively common or at least was and you know it's it's solid but it's a little bit older and you can see here first test 22k remaining so cpo sun tzu barely lost here i would say i mean definitely lost but barely next okay 54k remaining then we see okay 22k remaining okay and then we say okay 54k remaining and then it's like okay well then we say, okay 33k remaining all right so again cpo sun tzu loses every single time it was actually not as bad as i thought i thought nebu ysg would still destroy it and it kind of did okay but not as bad as the guan cpo okay so solid pairing beats cpo sun tzu every time kind of expected that so then i decided okay let's test it up against an older infantry pair and actually cpo sun tzu gets its first victory of the entire video and it's up against guan leo yes ladies and gentlemen guan leo expertise guan expertise leo loses to an expertise sun tzu with an expertise cpo that's it actually kind of crazy we have 22k remaining for the cpo sun tzu okay next we take a look this one guan leo wins 13k remaining very close fight but it does win next round it wins by 1800 insane guan leo coming out ahead here two to one okay guan leo up by one kill and then it wins again all right 18k remaining for guan leo all right and then we move on but there it is the cpo sun tzu wins again with 1300 units remaining okay so two out of the five battles the cpo sun tzu actually won now this i would say is more like a tie okay but the other one i would say is uh is basically a tie as well so i mean you can take this information how you want okay uh guan leo this says more about guan leo than it does about cpo sun tzu let's be honest okay if you're still running around with guan leo it just you gotta give it up bro you gotta put it on the bench don't use it for canyon don't use it for it like it's it can't come on boys guan leo has been dead for probably over a year now let's just let it rest it is what it is and this like this really nails it home right here boys like it really does okay so what have we learned we've learned that sun tzu the strongest epic in the game is useless he's useless in season of conquest there's absolutely nothing that you can do with him that would even move the needle even a little bit there's not even a a scenario where you could slide him into like your third infantry army as like a backup sort of like no no there's literally no use for sun tzu okay and that begs the question uh where where is sun tzu prime okay uh we need to do our boy sun tzu justice and b i feel like season of conquest epics should be a little bit stronger i feel like we should get a little bit of a buff like maybe a museum relic maybe potentially with like a cheaper currency or something like maybe maybe relics you can buy with like food and wood or something like that you know basically throw away and give us relics for for epics to make them like a little bit better that's what I think I'd be cool all right I I would like to see someone use Sun Tzu in season of conquest and actually do well but statistically it is impossible to do that okay so throw out the idea of using them in season of conquest you can't even think about using it even a little bit in any scenario never it is never going to work okay now if you are going into season one of kvk that's a different story okay season one of kvk 
you can slap him maybe behind a Charles Martel and you know you have a little bit of a you know a 5-1-1-1 Martel or something like that I don't know but an attack in the open field perhaps that could be something you could do okay you might pair him with Bjorn if you've got no legendaries you could throw throw him with Bjorn that's fine if you're a brand new player you could definitely throw him behind Pyrus I think that'd be a great idea 5-1-1-1 Pyrus uh with Sun Tzu behind him would be sick okay that's awesome I don't know what your Ethel fled is going to be like at season one of KVK uh probably not very far at all but I mean you might be able to try something there I don't know uh or you know if you, you have like a five five one one YSG or something you could do uh, again Sun Tzu primary YSG secondary you do something like that maybe okay maybe that's something you could do or you could do Sun Tzu primary with Mehmed secondary at five one 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 or five five one one or something like that okay definitely something else to consider uh maybe Richard although I don't love the Richard pairing because there's no synergy there with the skill damage there's not for Martel either but Martel is just Martel he's free there's really only a handful of decent pairs for Sun Tzu uh to be honest with you guys for the beginning of the game and then after that he falls off fast okay and that is unfortunate because I love our boy Sun Tzu he's awesome uh we need Sun Tzu Prime and the answer is just that he's useless in 2023 now for those of you who are actually considering using Sun Tzu as a primary commander in the open field we're gonna go over his talent builds but just to let you guys know you should never use Sun Tzu as an active in the open field unless you're in like kvk1 okay or pre kvk like that is literally the only time you should never I repeat you should never use an epic commander as a primary commander okay so this part of the video is only for those of you that are brand new to rise of kingdoms throw out the idea of using an epic as a primary okay this is one talent build you go all in, in on the entire infantry tree and then you grab rejuvenate for the rage regeneration then you grab a tactical mastery and you grab heraldic shield the other thing that you could do would be something like this where you go all in on the skill tree for the most amount of rage regeneration possible you grab hold the line you also grab strong of body undying fury you grab iron spear and two points into the march speed for six percent extra I don't love this talent build for Sun Tzu I actually prefer the other one where you go all in on the infantry tree and the reason for that is because you want the extra March speed that you get here in the infantry tree I think you basically need it it's non-negotiable but if you did want to go full skill tree you could go something like this now the third talent build that I'm going to give you guys is if you do plan on putting him on your wall you could do something like this now um, again don't don't take it don't take the city rally but if you're gonna put anyone on your wall you might want to use Sun Tzu in the early game and this could be your talent build okay you just grab the first line of the garrison trees here then you grab basically the first line of infantry I only put one point into double headed axe because it's all that I could fit I went all the way up here to feral nature and the reason that you don't grab a lot of these talent points over here is because your city is not going to have a lot of infantry in it it'll have maybe a quarter of your tr troops will be infantry unless you purposely train more of them uh and so these won't do anything or they won't do as much as you think for a city rally so that's what we're doing here uh the reason that we put three in iron spears because usually you take city rallies they're probably going to be cavalry but if you know that they're not going to be cavalry then that means you're online for the city rally and what did i say don't take it but if you expect a rally from something other than cavalry you could remove these points put them over here in double headed axe and then put your last point wherever else you want it doesn't really matter with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdom slayers might see it while you're down there comment down below what you think about this type of video should I go back and revisit some of the epic commanders or is it just a waste of time just ignore them forget about them entirely or would you guys like to see maybe a couple of more fun little tests just to see how bad they are against some of the season of conquest commanders I could definitely do that but let me know in the comment section below while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace